dear colleagues. Uh, welcome to the Emos Monastery, welcome to Prague. And thank you for coming and especially thank you for your work on the white papers. I have read all of them and they are very valuable, interesting and uh, we will listen to the results in, um, in a few minutes. Uh, I would like to uh, remind you uh, the main purpose and goal of our project. Uh, you know all of this uh, from, mm, from the project, but uh, repetitio is mater studiorum. Uh, our project is a Templeton project, as, and as such, uh, needs to be connected with one of uh, Sir John Templeton's big questions. And we have chosen the question, what are the ways in which a rigid faith with its social, cultural, and political impact may contribute shaping a better future? <clears throat> Mr. Templeton uh, supported humility in theology. What does it mean? He wrote, uh, there is much resistance to innovation and change among religious leaders. Some of us know about it a little bit. Uh, this he considered to be the main reason why too many religions sometimes seems like a kind of history museum. And he believed that an age of experimental theology, experimental theology, may be beginning if theologians, religious leaders, and scientists including social scientists, uh, will be humble enough to listen to each other and to cooperate. Uh, so our project should be an experiment of such a dialogue and cooperation. So it should be more than a pure academic research. But of course, uh, the scientific research is part of our project. Uh, I would like to stress that this one-year project is just a pilot project. And part of it is to prepare uh, the proposal for a longer and broader international project. Uh, we are coming, <coughs> uh, we are continuing uh, some way in the international project phase in secular age, inspired and led by Charles Taylor, Jose Casanova and George McLean, some of us were part of this uh, team. Uh, and we hope that we can uh, cooperate with our Western colleagues uh, from the previous project uh, at this future project. So, uh, back uh, to the topic of our project. Now, we have concretized uh, the Sir Templeton's question in this way. What are the desirable changes and reforms on the side of churches as they try to adapt their activities to changing cultural conditions to serve the actual needs of contemporary young seekers and apatheists? How can they effectively interact and communicate with seekers and apatheists? How can they cooperate with these groups of young people in order to cultivate the spiritual and moral climate in uh, Central Eastern European countries? Uh, so we want to accomplish three things. Uh, first, to offer religious leaders, theologians, and churches, and church representatives an empirically based uh, analysis of the changing spiritual condition of uh, the cultures in our region and help them to respond adequately. Uh, welcome, welcome. You have your Sorry, seats. Okay, okay. And we would like also to complement uh, the Western discourse on religion and its future with the contribution from the perspective of our region, 
uh, because it was uh, for me uh, also the motivation uh, when we took part in this uh, project uh, by Charles Taylor and Casanova and McLean. Um, I have mentioned that our Western colleagues have uh, money enough uh, to participate and their, their universities um, supported uh, the uh, traveling expenses and all the expenses and it was not our case uh, so when I received this Templeton Prize uh, my idea was to support um, a little bit uh, our region the specialists from our region to cooperate on this international project and it was very well accepted by the Templeton Foundation that uh, in the West they have a lot of dates about the situation in the West but not so many from our region so uh, we could also uh, to compare our situation, we have spoken about it um, this uh, this morning already, and uh, I think uh, that uh, we should invite also some experts uh, from the West to visit uh, one of our colloquium, and uh, so the results of our uh, project uh, will be also open for all on our website and so on. And um, uh, we want to prepare uh, this three-year projects by um, uh, refining research questions and hypotheses on the basis of the analysis of the results of the experimental research endured in uh, uh, our context within the framework of this one-year project. So, uh, we started with a survey of uh, sociological researches of uh, religious situation in our region, and we will listen to it uh, uh, this afternoon, our white papers. Uh, it was our, um, uh, our game to put together the results of uh, uh, the researches of the religious situation in particular countries. But uh, our main uh, task uh, of this project is uh, not only this characteristic of the general religious situation, but we focus on uh, this seekers and apatheist, uh, because uh, we all know that uh, the number of so-called dwellers, the people they are fully satisfied, uh, fully at home in the churches, fully satisfied and identified with uh, the institutions, with their teaching, uh, with the liturgy and so on, uh, and the uh, uh, number of those um, uh, dwellers is decreasing. But uh, the number of seekers is, uh, uh, is increasing. And I will speak later about uh, the possibility of definition of those seekers. There are seekers inside the churches. And they are members uh, of the church, uh, churches. And they are attending uh, the uh, liturgy, but they are not fully identified with the churches and they are not fully <coughs> satisfied in the other churches and for them is uh, faith not a treasure like for the, for the dwellers. Um, uh, the uh, faith is for those people more a pass, a way, uh, something what is, uh, what has its dynamic and uh, uh, also, they are seekers among so-called non-believers or atheists. Many people in our country call themselves atheists, uh, but um, if I ask them uh, how the God looks like in which you don't believe, uh, so um, I must say thanks to God that you don't believe in such a God. In such a God, I don't believe either. And they say, oh, moment, I'm not a stupid materialist. You know, I know that something is above of us. So I think this somethingness 
is the most widespread religion in our country and perhaps not uh, only in our in our country <clears throat> so they are among those non-believers also many seekers uh, and believers in their own individualistic way and there are many people uh, in the uh, so-called gray zone between believers and non-believers, but this zone is not gray, it's very colorful. There are people of many, many various um, orientation, and uh, uh, there are many people, they are simul fidelis et infidelis. They are, in the same time, uh, faithful and, uh, and uh, non-believers. There are people, and uh, they are believers uh, during their days, but in their nights, and they have uh, the doubts and uh, uh, problems. And they are people, they are praying during the night, but during the day, the religion has no effect on their uh, everyday life. So uh, there are many, uh, the um, struggle between the belief and non-belief is not a struggle between two separated parts part of uh, people. Uh, it's something what happened in uh, the mind and uh, souls of many, many people. So uh, th those seekers, and I I'm, I'm, I'm strongly believe that uh, in the future, uh, the, the future of religion and also the future of the churches, which is not the same, uh, depend on the ability of the churches to work with those seekers. Uh, because uh, uh, the churches now are concentrated mainly on the pastoral work in the parishes uh, with these dwellers. Uh, and uh, also a little bit uh, for the classical mission to convert the non-believers into believers. But I think the work with those seekers is something different. Uh, perhaps it's not the main task of the churches to make uh, from the seekers dwellers. Uh, it's perhaps not the main task to push those seekers into the existing structures of the churches, the intellectual structures, the institutional structures. I think uh, the most important task for the churches in the future will be to accompany the seekers. And to the seekers, we can go uh, only as, uh, as seekers ourselves. We cannot to, uh, go uh, to, to, to come to them from above, like the owners of the whole truth. Uh, so uh, I think there should be a little bit of conversion by many church representatives. And uh, this could be, could have an effect on the ecclesiology, on the theological self-understanding of the churches. Churches not just uh, um, just a bastion, but an open church. Uh, it uh, was the intention of the Vatican of Secundum, and even uh, the Pope Benedict uh, spoke about the courtyard of, uh, the, gen uh, of the Gentiles uh, that uh, the church should have as the temple in Jerusalem, uh, the open place for the seekers. I think that this uh, it was a nice idea, but I think it was also a little bit triumphalistic. Is the church today in the position that we can offer uh, the courtyard for the Gentiles? I think sometimes the uh, classical institution, uh, um, institution of the church has the same uh, situation as the temple in Jerusalem, that we have just the wall for crying. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, uh, so uh, uh, I try to, 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 to offer some uh, some different uh, metaphor that uh, um, Piazza di San Pietro in Rome is a symbol, you know, with this uh, colonnade of Bernini. Uh, it's like the open arm and the architecture idea of the uh, of uh, the basilica was that this uh, place, that this piazza, is also part of the basilica. So also the people that are going through uh, the St. Peter's uh, Square 
are in fact inside. So uh, Augustine already said there are many people, they are, uh, they think they are inside, but in the fact they are outside. And there are many people they are outside, but in the fact they are inside. So I think uh, also this dialogue, uh, the sociologists with uh, church representatives, and there will be the uh, possibility uh, or the occasion for such a dialogue in our third uh, meeting, uh, could uh, perhaps in, uh, have an impact on those uh, religious uh, leaders and theologians uh, to change a little bit the self-understanding of the church, the ecclesiology. Uh, so, uh, because there are uh, this a number of developers, uh, also the many ex-Catholics, uh, and uh, many of those ex-Catholics are a little bit looking uh, at the Pope Francis as a signal, so perhaps we can in some way return. And also one of my secret intention was during the, uh, this, uh, this um, uh, Taylor's research, uh, to create uh, also a brain trust of, uh, of sociologists, theologians, they could a little bit help the Pope Francis in his reform of the church, uh, because he needs uh, such a background of specialists, international spe specialists, um, because many people are happy that they have the sympathetic uh, uh, Pope, uh, smiling Pope, but it is not enough for this reform. Uh, it should be uh, it should be reflected and 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 develop more his his idea. So, um, yeah, also we, um, uh, but we are interested uh, also in those apartheid. There are many uh, people in our region, especially in the Czech uh, Republic, but not only in our Republic, they have no interest about religion and church. And, uh, and they uh, um, uh, say, uh, speak, we are atheists, it means we are normal. We are normal men, so we are atheists. We are not a part of this uh, very special group uh, of, of, of believers. So how to attract uh, the uh, interests of those Apathies about uh, spiritual values, about uh, what is going in 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 the churches and so on. Um, I, I think that uh, we should start with uh, putting the question: What is the sacred for those apathies? Uh, but for uh, for each person, I hope is something sacred, something ultimate concern. And Martin Luther said that God is for men um, what is the most important for him. So um, I think this work with the apatheists uh, should be looking at what is sacred for them and how we can attract their interest uh, through the social media and so on. Uh, so, uh, we should concentrate ourselves uh, on the future, on the future, future of religion, future of religion in our, in our region. Uh, so, um, uh, also we, uh, we know that the churches have lost the monopoly um, at religion and they have no chance perhaps to get it back. But there will be, and there is, and there will be the plurality in the religious scene, but uh, especially in this uh, situation, it's very important to accompany the seekers and to, uh, to be in dialogue with them and to enrich also ourselves through uh, the experience of those seekers. Um, Yeah, so uh, I'm, I'm looking very much uh, for this, our dialogue with the church representatives, and there will be our uh, task uh, for uh, the third colloquium, which will be in April, uh, to bring some church representative um, to our meeting. Uh, so it 
uh, it should be necessary, uh, the um, uh, archbishop and so, but we are looking for uh, the people, they are open-minded uh, in the churches. They, and for the people, they uh, could have an impact of the life of the church. It could be somebody uh, from the hierarchy, but it could be a theologian or somebody who is opinion maker, who has some influence on the moral climate in the society. So such of people we should invite to our discussion. And um, I, I wonder uh, if uh, they think that the aim of the church is to make from seekers dwellers. And, uh, and uh, uh, so I think there will be much more ways, uh, styles, how to be a Christian in the future than it has been now. So, who are the seekers and how we can define them? It's a very complicated question. Charles Taylor states, there is a mode of spiritual seeking which is a very widespread in the West today, but which, is the, which the official church often seems to want to rebuff. Seekers ask questions. But the official church seems largely concerned with pushing certain already worked out answers. It seems to have little capacity to listen. And, and they are uh, two uh, very interesting, uh, uh, very interesting sociologists in Netherlands, uh, Staff Hellemans and Peter Jonkers, our colleagues uh, from the uh, research team working on the project Face in Second Age. And they edited uh, a book, uh, The Contingent Meeting of a Catholic Minority Church with Seekers. This book uh, was a part of uh, that project. And they reflect uh, the experience of North, North Western Europe, Belgium, Netherlands, Germany, Austria, the countries which are regarded to be highly secularized, meaning uh, that the main church, church uh, Christian churches have lost much of their former societal significance. Uh, they are aware that another countries in which uh, is assume, assumed uh, that religion in general and the Catholic Church in particular will retain their central position in society might have raised a rise uh, to different perspectives. But the authors are convinced that the far-reaching secularization and pluralization and uh, shift towards a more fragile minority position of the main churches in this part of the world, uh, so in the West, will become in due course the basic condition for the most religions in other countries on the globe as well. So it's an open question, it's an open and very difficult question of this situation in the West. Is the future for, uh, for other countries? Many sociologists say no to this, uh, but we will see. Um, I will quote from, uh, from, from the book, uh, not only the position of the main churches has changed uh, or is changing, but also the people who are engaging in or merely encountering church and religion, the erstwhile sheep or followers have been turned into seekers. Individualization and religious pluralization are, as it well known, the major process behind this turn. The labor seekers gained his currency from the 1980s onwards, especially in the United States. Research depicted people in search of spirituality, but without adhering to a church. In the United States, so-called seekers-sensitive churches were promoted in evangelical circles in order to reach the un- and non-churched. The concept of seekers and seeking 
can be used in more than one meaning. First, following what now in his After Heaven, in his book After Heaven, spirituality in America since the 1950s, one can distinguish seekers from dwellers in a straightforward way. For what now, seekers are then regarded as non-church members who are exploring from outside organized religion and in full awareness of their autonomy what is, op what is on offer in the religious, spiritual, or life orientation realm. They are constructing their own religious blend out of uh, a mix of different religions and life orientations. Dwellers, on the other hand, are seen as believing and listening religion within the confines of their churches. Uh, uh, look, Hallman, uh, concludes that seekers defined as being religious without belonging constitute across Europe a very small minority, about 7%, in contrast to 60% of the Europeans who may be considered as dwellers. But uh, using another operationalization, being religious without regular church attendance, the proportion of seekers rise to 42%. According to the last criterion, Catholic across Europe are mostly dwellers, more uh, so than Protestants and Orthodox. Yet, in the Netherlands, for example, the Catholic seekers outnumber Catholic dwellers, and so on. Uh, but Woodnow himself already suggested there is no absolute separation between seekers and dwellers. Many dwellers are seeking for spiritual enrichment, both within and outside their home church, no less than the seekers without affiliation to a church. So, uh, the today's society of people whose religious attitude has, in many cases, moved even beyond Grace Davies' qualification of believing without belonging, whereas Davies' characterization still presupposed a certain familiarity with, or at least knowledge of, a religious tradition, contemporary people's religious attitude often rather reflect a longing without belonging, which stress the rather undefined and syncretistic character of their beliefs and religious uh, practice. So, um, I'm, I'm uh, concluding with, um, with this, uh, our specific hypothesis and questions, uh, but you have this <coughs> in our project. So, first, concerning seekers. Um, our uh, questions are, what are the particular obstacles in communication between contemporary seekers in our region and mainstream churches. Seekers in our region tend to identify Christianity with its institutional and ritual aspects, and they typically reject it. At the same time, they tend to respond positively to the spiritual and mystical dimensions of Christianity. This raises a number of questions. For example, how should the rich mystical resources of Christianity be offered to the contemporary seekers? Second, concerning the apatheist. So I, 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 I spoke, uh, what is the sacred for, 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 for them? What is the implicit spirituality and ethics of people who are not used to think about these matters theoretically? and who don't understand the language employed by believers in relation to these issues. Third, uh, what are the popular and effective avenues of communication familiar to young people? And how could these avenues be employed to open conversations with both apatheists 
and seekers on spiritual and ethical themes concerns. So there are the questions for us. Uh, uh, we should also uh, do uh, something special in our Czech Republic, uh, but uh, it could be also the inspiration for you, but we have not uh, uh, much uh, possibilities to uh, support these things in all regions. It is, uh, uh, for example, uh, um, uh, we would like to communicate with uh, the chaplains in uh, with the so-called categorical pastoral care the chaplains in army the chaplains in hospital the chaplains at the university the chaplains in prison because those are very well accepted also in the secular society in our country and i think it's an important step towards this accompanying the seekers because for example the uh, chaplains in the prison they are uh, they are there not only for the pious criminals <laughs> they are for all of them and also in in the hospital so uh, they suppose that each person has his uh, spiritual dimension of uh, of, uh, of of its person and we should uh, to be in contact with those, uh, those, those people, not only to concentrate ourselves uh, for, 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 for the believers, and also how we can perhaps uh, use the experiences uh, from the communist time, from the underground church. Uh, the priests, they were secretly ordained as myself. We have had uh, our uh, our job, our civil job, and in the same time we were working as priests. So may it be also the inspiration for the future that uh, the priest should be not just the specialist in the parish and he could connect his uh, pastoral work with his civil uh, Civil job and so on. So um, uh, we should also to uh, to uh, to think about it. So uh, this is uh, I try to uh, to uh, to remind you at the beginning uh, the main purpose, the goal, and a little bit uh, the uh, philosophical or theological or also theological background of our research. So thank you.